Hi guys, good evening, and welcome back once again to The Edward. I'm your host, Eddie, and in tonight's video, I'll be discussing what I thought of the latest and very good, solid episode and the season two finale of House of the Dragon. <whistles> Damn, a lot went down in this episode. We got a lot to talk about. Now, before I get into all that, of course, please be warned, if you were like me, like I was a few days ago. I wasn't caught up on this show. I was out of town for the weekend. Didn't get back till super late Sunday night. And I finally had a chance to watch this show just now. So um, if you're not caught up on the show by the eighth episode, which is the season two finale, you don't want to keep watching or listening to this review as I will be covering stuff and discussing spoilers, plot details, character stuff, all that jazz. That being said, you have been warned. Let's dive right back into it. Man, a lot went down in this episode. You know, we start off with Aemond, his ego still being so bruised, so damaged by the fact that he's not the only dragon rider anymore. He lashes out and takes it out on an entire innocent town. A town that I think was aligned and loyal to Rhaenyra, but he burns it to a crisp just because he got angry. Psychopath. And then we have Aegon escaping King's Landing with Laris, Just going off like, okay, you know what? Your brother's going to kill you anyway. Shit's about to go down. Let's get the fuck out of here. I got all this gold. We could live like kings for the rest of our days. Or at least until shit calms down in King's Landing. And off they go. And then we had the Sea Snake being rightfully called out for being an absentee father by one of his two sons. Totally understandable. Emotional scene. Kind of uh, parts of it were a bit hard to watch. You know, nobody's relationship with their parents is absolutely perfect. But if you've ever been angry or upset with your parents before, whether you were in the right or in the wrong, you know, a child lashing out at a parent is always an interesting thing to see. And unfortunately for many of us, quite relatable. Um, but uh, it was still an emotional powerful scene. Hats off to both actors for doing such a great job and such a character-driven moment and scene there between those two. Um, getting a little annoyed with Rhaenyra's son, Jaceres. Am I saying that right, Jaceres? Acting like how, oh, I'm better than everybody because I'm actually Targaryen born. I've got Targaryen blood in me. Y'all are just a bunch of peasants who got lucky. Dude, get over yourself. You know what? These guys have got obviously some Targaryen heritage in them. Otherwise, the dragons wouldn't have chosen them. So get the fuck over yourself and quit whining like a little bitch. I mean, yeah, the one guy was acting like a bit of a slob and very rude at dinner, unbecoming of a Targaryen or a dragon rider. You know, he was letting the fact that he was an, a sudden dragon rider go to his head now. But um, hopefully he gets his shit together. So, but um, yeah, the prince was just annoying me in this episode. I'm like, get over yourself, man. Oh, you know, am I a bastard? Am I, is my father not my real father? Yeah, well, tough, pal. Sorry. You know, and then uh, speaking of bastards, I talked about Eamon, uh, I talked about Sneak Snake and his son. Stuff with uh, Tyland Lannister and the pirate uh, admiral was pretty funny, pretty cool, interesting. At first I wasn't quite sure who they were or who they were supposed to be, but I guess they're supposed to be the merchants and the pirates who could probably take on the Sea, sea Snake's blockade and have aligned themselves now with the High Towers in their war against um, the Targaryens. So that makes sense. Um, so that was funny. And, um, you know, I, I loved, I also loved how Damon has had a real transformation this whole season compared to where he started out in the season to how he has ended up pledging himself and all of his soldiers, his army that he has raised in Westeros to Rhaenyra and vowing to, like, vowing to her that he'll always support her no matter what now, and he truly, rightfully has pledged himself to her, that was impressive to see. And of course, it was all in thanks to the vision he had of the long night that is to come, not for another 172 years, mind you, but it is coming, like he said, winter is coming. This particular winter won't come for quite a while since this show is set 
172 years or maybe 300 years before the events of Game of Thrones. It's a long time, basically, but he got a glimpse of the future with the White Walker and the Army of the Dead and that glimpse of Daenerys Targaryen being reborn in fire with her three baby dragons. Of course, he doesn't know that's Daenerys, but we do. But, you know, having a glimpse in the future realizing that he's just a very small piece in a very large puzzle in a very large world. He seems to have gotten his act together and gotten behind Rhaenyra once and for all. And it was really satisfying to watch him bend the knee and swear allegiance to her, getting all of his men that he's routed up initially for himself as king, but then changed his mind and was like, no, nah, you know what? She is the right, right, true queen. Speaking of queens, was not expecting Allison to take a page out of Rhaenyra's playbook, hop on a boat and come on over to Dragonstone and plead with Rhaenyra to stop the war before it escalates any further. And she's like, uh, girl, it's too late for that. You know, blood has been drawn, people have died, and people are still going to die. You really want to end this? Give me your son. Give me that one-eyed little prick, a son for a son. And Allison seemingly agreed to it because she seems convinced that her son is too far gone. He's become way too twisted, which I totally agree with. And she's like, okay, you want the throne? Take it. You want to kill Aemon, my son? Go ahead. He's a prick anyway. I'm like, okay, let's bring it on. I love the closing moments of the season finale. And I feel like any good season finale for any show should do this, where we get snippets of our last glimpses of these characters that we're gonna see for a while and where they're at, who they're with, what they're doing and what they're up to. And I feel like all of these forces, these armies are converging all at once. Eventually somewhere they're gonna collide with one another, except for Aegon and Laris, they're seemingly on the road in a wagon, getting away from all the action, but everybody else is closing in on the action, which I thought was very cool. So it was a good closing shot, a good way to close out another impressive season of another great show, and I can't wait to see what season three has in store for us. It's supposed to be all out war, and I'm all here for it. Sadly, it will be ending with a fourth season. However, it feels like they won't be repeating a lot of mistakes that Game of Thrones made in its its later seasons. So the fact that they're going to have a shorter series run with a beginning, middle, end, it will probably end in a lot more satisfying way than Game of Thrones did for many, many people. At least that's my hope, but we'll only know when we know. So what did you guys think of the season two finale? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Were you expecting more, expecting less? Let me know what your thoughts are down below in the comments section. Have a wonderful rest of your night. House of the Dragon season three goes into production early next year. Who the hell knows when we'll actually see it, but I'm sure when we do, it'll be great. Have a good one, everyone. And of course, until next time, may the force be with you.